So, uh, is my screen visible? I think it's visible. So, yeah, let's start. So, uh, today we'll be looking about hypothesis testing uh, and statistical power. So in the previous session about AB hypothesis, uh, you've seen uh, how to make the hypothesis, how to use. Okay, is that a question? Okay. Okay, I think they're ready. I just started. Yeah. Yeah, in the previous uh, sessions that you have what you don't. Yes, that you had. Uh, you We're seeing uh, some things about the hypothesis, introduction about the hypothesis that you use and things like that. And also it's somehow familiar concept. Uh, hello. Hello, Rich. Um, that's an intrigue. Let's just see what statistics or what statistical hypothesis is. So, in statistics, we wish to start asking questions about the data, interpret the result. We use statistical tests that provide uh, confidence or likelihood about answers. Uh, you are breaking up uh, a bit. Okay. I'm uh, okay. It's the connection actually. Okay. Can you start from uh, the beginning? Sure. I will start from the beginning. Uh, am I good now or should I change the connection? Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah, let, let's just continue. I will start from the beginning. Sure. And maybe I might not be seeing the your reaction or thing. So like, if there is a, a breakdown again, yeah, let me know. So what we were just saying is, uh, so we have just put some ideas. Let's say that we have we have some hypothesis. We make some hypothesis and some idea or data. So we need to prove that if that hypothesis is right or wrong, we need to make whether our guess or hypothesis is reasonable and things like that, right? Since that is the idea of uh, making hypothesis and then trying to prove, pro trying to prove those hypotheses. hypothesis. So the first thing is uh, data. Like we have the data, and we based on our. Uh, Hypothesis, we will try to prove if our hypothesis is reasonable or right or wrong using our data. Uh, so th there is the null hypothesis again. Um, I have noted that you have seen some, uh, you have some information about the null hypothesis that uh, I'm trying to revise it or may not say again. It's a type of co uh, conjecture in statics that propose that there is no difference between certain characteristics of a population or data generating process. So what this is. Uh, trying to uh, compare or contrast between two data, two variables, or two uh, parameters that indicates or describes some situations, we're going to have some null hypothesis. Okay, that null hypothesis will say that there is, uh, yeah, there is no relation between those parameters. Okay, whatever. the case is whatever the situation or the data type and the parameters are then the hypothesis will say there is no relation between that two if the, if they are if there are two variables there is no relation with between those two variables and things like that okay uh, and yeah as i told you i noted that you have seen something about the hypothesis so maybe let's try uh, let's try this example let's uh hypothesize or guess uh let's say that we have some data and let's try to hypothesize that there is no really there whether those data are normal data normalized data or not the game might normalize data. We mean, uh, am I breaking the game? Okay. So, yeah, normalized data means uh, 
all the data are symmetric to each other, or they have constant mean or constant variables and things like that. Okay, I think you're somehow familiar with normalized data, so the they are somehow constant. If you do some graph on the data for like using those data, they're going to have something like the uh, sine graph or sine cosine graph. So like they will be low from the tail and from the front, and then symmetric uh, graph. So do you get the idea of uh, normal data? So I, I was just thinking to provide you some uh, question about to determine whether what the what will the null hypothesis will be for those types of data. Do you get my question? Okay, uh, let me try to say it again. Okay, so like, let's say, let's try to make a hypothesis on um, whether some data, like we're provided with a data, let's say. So we're trying to uh, prepare or we're trying to state the null hypothesis of that data. Okay, so the data is, yeah, okay. The data, the, the data is, uh, so like our hypothesis is whether those data are normal or not, okay? So like, those, if, if, if we are, if we're about to say if the, if those are, if those data are normal, then we mean, what well, are the hypothesis common in all projects? Yeah, you, you, for, in all projects, you mean in all hypothesis, statistical projects. So if you have some hypothesis, then you can have in the, um, hypothesis for all uh, hypotheses. So the null hypothesis can be represented by H0. So for every H0, we have H1, which is, I mean, for every H1 or hypothesis that we're going to make, we have H0, which is the null hypothesis, okay? So in this case, I'm just giving you the case, okay? Let's say we're trying to determine, we have some data, and we're trying to determine whether those data are normal, normalized, normally distributed data or not. So what we mean by normally distributed data, it's the type of the data that have constant mean and st the standard deviation is constant or they are symmetric to each other, okay? If you know the graph, it will be a graph like the sign of, you know, so like it's simply to each other. So uh, there are many data or data or the parameters, the, the sum data, they are very much related with each other, okay? So we're trying to prove if the data we have is normal, if the data or if the yeah, if the data that we have collected is a normal data or not. Maybe if it is, there is no one who, who, who got my question right. If that is the case, then it's my problem. Uh, I think your uh, your question is how, how do we identify our data is normal or not, right? No, I'm trying to give you the situation, and I want you to identify uh, what the null hypothesis of this situation will be. So I'm just checking if we got the idea of null hypothesis correctly or not. Yeah, I think for uh, for me, uh, uh, the, the null hypothesis assumes that there is no relation between uh, any of uh, the variables, so it assumes null uh, at the beginning. Uh, am I right? Yes, exactly. You are right. Yeah. So, and, uh, so what next... are... okay. Go on, continue. Okay. Let, let me just, just. I just want to to make sure that uh, you your explain uh, explanation about uh, the normal data. You say uh, the normalization. You say that the data uh, uh, maybe form uh, like a sine wave, right? Uh, when we visualize them, uh, yeah, I'm, you said, I'm just yeah, like it's. They're not going to directly have, literally have the sine wave. I'm just trying to, yeah, to, to explain like maybe the one cycle of the sine graph, you know, the one curve or like. So just trying to um, tell you about the like trying to represent the normalized data graphically you just say the sine wave they're not the same they are actually not the same but all, maybe only the one side okay so the, the sine graph is like up and down up and down up and down right so only just the one curve we can consider that as a normalized graph Abraham. <laughs> 
Do I get your point? Uh, okay, yeah, 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 I get it. Uh, so I think you can ask uh, the... Hmm. Okay, yeah, anybody who can, I think Abraham had just answered the question. So like the point is in while making a null hypothesis for, I think the null hypothesis assumes normal distribution. Yeah, okay, what, let me try, Matthias, yeah. You, let me try to elaborate my point. So what I'm trying to say is maybe there will be a confusion in taking out putting the null hypothesis of a situation. Don't consider that putting putting the out like the opposite of our hypothesis is the null hypothesis. Null hypothesis is not about putting the opposite of our, our hypothesis. Okay. For for this situation, if our hypothesis about some data is like the data are the data are normally distributed, then the hypothesis the null hypothesis will be same with the hypothesis since then it's going to uh, since then the, the null hypothesis it's not about being opposite to our hypothesis it's all about saying that the variables inside the, or the parameters inside inside our data are not related with each other so focus on that but maybe there there are some mistakes that will happen in underst understanding or understanding the concept of null hypothesis that's why i put it this example so yeah, we can continue. Okay. My it is taking too much. So null hypothesis is type of uh, conjecture in statics that propose that there is no difference between certain characteristics of a population or data generating process. So the goal of the hypothesis test is to determine whether there is in enough evidence Let's try. Okay, there is enough evidence to reject this null hypothesis in favor of an alternative hypothesis, which would suggest that the training program does have a significant. Okay, yeah, this is maybe um, an example. So let's say we're trying. We we have added there is some training program, and we have uh, suggested some form of uh, change or recommendation for the training program. So like the null hypothesis of this example will be the suggestions or the recommendations that we've added on the training program are, is not going to affect the overall uh, significance of the training okay so in this case we got the null hypothesis so the goal of the hypothesis will be to test and determine whether there is enough evidence to reject this null hypothesis so since in order to prove our hypothesis we need to reject the null hypothesis okay in favor of an alternative hypothesis which would suggest that the training program does have a significant effect so if we if we have um, proved right that the training program have a significant effect on the overall program, then we have proved the null hypothesis wrong. So that is the goal of making our hypothesis and the other things. So while making a hypothesis, or um, while trying to reject or to um, to agree with the null hypothesis, we might have an error. So th there are an errors called type 1 and type 2 errors. So the type 1 errors is the incorrect rejection of a true null hypothesis or a false positive, okay? Uh, so there is a, like, as we have talked, there is a null hypothesis in this case that the training, um, the values added to the training program are not going to affect the training program is the null hypothesis. So if we have, if we have rejected that hypothesis with incorrect uh, anal anal analyzations or like another factors, then it's called type one error. We have committed an, a type one error, okay? So it's a rejection of a true null hypothesis or a false positive. It, this means the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, is, the null hypothesis is right. Then we're not supposed to do, uh, we're not supposed to add that recommendations or other features for the training since it's not going to affect uh, the training positively. And the type two errors is the incorrect failure of rejection of a false null hypothesis or false negative. In this case, the incorrect failure of rejection means like. Uh, we were supposed to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis, since the data we have are, uh, since or on the specific example that we've mentioned earlier, since the additions that we have had or the recommendations are going to affect the training program positively, um, then we're supposed to reject the null hypothesis. So our analysis was supposed to reject the null hypothesis, but if the if our analysis failed to reject the null hypothesis, then we have committed. We can say that we've committed the type two error. Okay. So ideally, we want to choose significance label that minimize the likelihood 
of one of these errors. So how are we going to do that? Still, we have, uh, I, uh, I think we have covered uh, how to calculate the p-values and the, or the significance value. So based on the significance value, we're going to make decision whether to reject or to accept the null hypothesis. So we want to choose significant label that minimize the likelihood of one of these errors, okay? For example, I vary. small such as 0 0.05, 0 0.01. There are common many fields of science. So like numbers that are less than or equal to those significant scale actually depend on the situations and on the calculation of the hypothesis, but mostly uh, numbers which are less than, less than the 0 0.05 and 0 0.01. If we got the p value less than those values, it's uh, it's called alpha, like the alpha or the significance value that we that we're going to put, and there is the value that we're going to calculate. So if the number that we calculated in uh, ha having hand is less than that number that we put it, then we can consider we can fully reject the null hypothesis. But if not, or if the significance value is larger than the this critical point or critical value, then we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. And it's going to have the message, message like the null hypothesis is right, okay? So <clears throat> now we've seen the null the, um, the general aspect of hypothesis, the null hypothesis, and how to accept and reject the null hypothesis, and uh, type of errors that we might commit while uh, trying to accept or uh, reject the null hypothesis. So, what is statistical power? So statistical power in hypothesis testing refers to the probability that a statistics test will correctly reject a false, a false null hypothesis, which means, as we've mentioned, uh, if the, like which means in another case or um, trying to uh, describe it in the, in aspect of the significance value, if we have larger significance value, we've just said that we're going to conclude that the null hypothesis is wrong or we're going to I mean, right, we're going to accept the null hypothesis, right? So statistical power, it refers to the probability that a statistical test will correctly reject the false null hypothesis. So if we have, uh, if the null hypothesis is false, then it needs to be rejected. So statistical power is going to calculate uh, the probability of um, our calculation or analysis to reject the null hypothesis. In simple terms, it measures the ability of statistical test to detect an effect if the effect exists, okay? So which means, uh, so what, what have we just said about uh, null hypothesis? If there is an effect between the parameters or the data, we're going to literally reject the null hypothesis, right? So in another term, the statistical power is going to measure the ability of the test to detect an effect if the effect exi exists. By effect, it means that the relation between the parameters and things like that. So a high statistical power indicates a low prob probability of type 2 error. So statistical power directly relates with the type 2 error. So what, what was type 2 error? It's the incorrect or the failure to reject the false hypothesis, the false hypothesis, okay? The, the false null hypothesis. So imagine the, the null hypothesis is false and we were not able to reject that hypothesis. So, uh, like, it's an error, and it's called a type 2 error. But if we have a good statistical power or a high statistical power, it, we have a low probability of uh, uh, facing the type 2 error, because which occurs when the test fails to reject a false null hypothesis, as that it fails to detect the real effect, right? Like if we, if we say that the type 2, if the type 2 error is happened, it's like our analysis fails to detect relations between between the parameters. So the more statistical power we have, or high statistical power we have, the more we fix, what did we say here? It measures the ability of the, stat, the statistical test to detect an effect in, if the effect exists, right? So the more statistical power we have, uh, the more we're going to able to identify if there is a relation or an effect between the parameters. And the higher statistical power for a given experiment, the lower the probability of making type 2, the false negative error. That is the higher the probability of detecting an effect when there is an effect. In fact, the power is uh, precisely the inverse of probability of type 2 error. So, 
they're not directly related. So just to summarize those points in two light, low statistical power, large risk of committing the type 2 error, and high statistical power is a uh, small risk of committing type 2 errors. It's directly related with type 2 error. So statistical power, or like when we came to the number, or the power, it's called the power analysis, or calculating the statistical power is finally about calculating the power analysis. So calculating the power analysis, what is the, uh, like, you know, having the high value, the low value, and things like that, at the end of the day, using those calculations, we will be able to identify those parameters. So there is the effect size, like on the calculation of power analysis, there is the effect size, the sample size, the significance, and the statistical power. Uh, so having all those parameters, we, we are able to identify the power analysis. And missing one of those variables, actually, most of the variables are, we can just put in numbers based on uh, power, our hypothesis or our insight. And if we miss the power, like one of them, maybe the sample size, then we're, we will be able to calculate good sample size for our data or uh, for our statistical uh, work using the power analysis. So what are those parameters? The effect size, it's the quantified magnitude of a result present in the population. So effect size is calculated using, okay, before seeing the calculation, it's the quantified magnitude of a result present in the population. So um, how are those parameters or those uh, features about the data are going to affect the result in the, po in the population, okay? So it's just a number from, I think, 0 0.8 to 0 point, uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.8. And maybe in, like, middle, we can say 0 0.5. Uh, it's not that, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's not that a big number. So uh, it's going to measure how the effect will be, how the effect of those parameters will be on the... Uh, on the whole, on the overall uh, analysis of, of the statistics or the data, okay? So the quantified effect size is calculated using specific statistical measures, such as maybe Pearson correlation coefficient or the relationship between variables or constancy for the difference between groups. So it's not that we are going to do every calculation. No, we're, we're just supposed to use uh, functions and we can just calculate them. But at the end of the day, we need to be able to interpret the number. So uh, seeing the effect size, we, we're going to see how um, the magnitude, the quantified magnitude of the result, okay? And the sample size, of course, it's the number of observation in the sample, and the significance is the number that we've talked on the, while trying to prove to reject or to um, agree with the null hypothesis. So the significance value label used in the statistics test, it's alpha is the, the point that I've told you, the critical point, okay? That we're going to, we're going to say if, uh, our significance value is greater than this or greater than less than this. And there's the statistical power, which is the whole power analysis that we've done, that we're talking about. It is the probability of accepting the alternative hypothesis if it is true, or what we've said here. It's the hype, it refers to the probability that a statistical test will correctly reject a false null hypothesis. So it's the probability of accepting the alternative hypothesis if it is true. Those two are the same. Mm, yeah, they could be the same type of idea, just in different words, okay? So I feel like maybe it's uh, a wide concept and big concept. So at the end of the day, the point is to calculate a significant number or uh, a number that will go with our hypothesis, uh, like uh, a good number of sample size for our hypothesis, okay? And whether to know if the null hypothesis is right or, is right or wrong. So that's the core concept. So maybe you can see a uh, calculation here. Uh, so here, um, let's start from the last. We're trying to calculate the sample size. Is this is it visible, I guess? Yeah, we're, we're trying to calculate the sample size, which is, as I mentioned earlier, one of the variables here that we have mentioned in the power analysis calculation, it's the sample size, right? So let's say there's the effect size. So if we're, if we're about, if you want to calculate the sample size or the good sample size, so we need to know the effect size, the significance in the statistical power, right? So the effect size, uh, also as mentioned here, we can calculate it using the Pearson correlation or the coincidence 
for the difference, uh, the coins the uh, formula. So in this case, we are going to use the coins of uh, the formula and for the, for the significance, we're going to take the, um, we can take the obvious numbers, which is 0 0.05. By this, like by using the p-value as 0 0.05, we're, we're trying to say that from the 20 data that we're provide, like that we're provided, um, one of them, one of the 20 data might agree with the null hypothesis, but the race 19 will be, will agree with our hypothesis. Okay, as I told you, the null hypothesis is, uh, uh, it's uh, described by the H0, so one of the data, only one of the data from the 20 data is going to agree for, with the null hypothesis. The rest are going to agree with H1, which is our hypothesis. And the statistical power, it's mostly um, 0 0.8, which is 80% and things like that. So we need to agree or we need to uh, more accept the uh, hypothesis like it is true so mostly we're going to use 80 percent or 0 0.8 for the statistical power so here uh we've just used the uh, random data okay so first we're trying to calculate the effect size which is e and we're trying to perform um we're trying to identify e by the effective size or d actually it's represented by d here by the coherence from coherence d formula so um yeah size of samples that is the pilot the p the pilot sample okay at the end of the day we're trying to have the right number of sample size and to have uh, yeah to have a sample size that is going to be relatable with our um, hypothesis and the uh, standard de deviations or the va the five variance of the data the sample data so you can take based on the analysis that we're going to make that you're going to make or the character the parameters that you're going to take you're going to find the standard deviations and using the, this formula we're going to find for the um, full standard deviations and then the finally the point is calculating the effect size d which is u1 minus u2 which is the mean of the sample and per ace which is the standard deviation or the calculated the full standard de deviation that we uh, got from this formula, okay? So after having the D or the effect size, then we can put the factors for power analysis like alpha 0 0.05 and power 0 0.8. So what will be remaining is also the, is only the sample size, which is which can be calculated using this formula. And here we have got uh, a sample size around 60.715, which is almost 80. Okay, which means that we can continue, uh, like, or yeah, include 18 values in our sample, sample data. So that's the, at the end of the day, having the sample size or the right amount of sample size is going to affect the whole process, the whole hypothesis positively, but you can just do every steps, like taking the, uh, significance value and deciding whether the our hypothesis is right or wrong and demonstrating that with your words and then um, yeah after having p-values trying to do the power analysis and uh, after that yeah uh, trying to differentiate the sample size so uh, imagine if you have the sample size we were able to make or if we can make a good sample size or like estimate a good sample size we can do the other uh, we can do in the other direction okay having all the variables the alpha the power the sample size you know not the power the alpha the sample size and the d the effect size we can calculate the power okay so using those uh, variables uh, in different uh, situations then you need to make you need to make the anal analysis and decision whether to take and to leave actually to reject or to agree with the null hypothesis whether to whether you've committed the type 1 and type 2 errors and things like that okay so uh, uh, what if there's something that you want to say equations suggestions uh, or ideas that you want to put So do you got the idea of the station? So, or the uh, statistical power or the power analysis? Is there any question or confusion? Okay. 
Okay. If there's some confusion, then you can just tell me. So you might relate this with your uh, Chinese document. And uh, you, there are some things that are, let's say, it's like if the try to analyze uh, uh, some situations, if they are on depending on the zip code or on the dem demographic area and things like that. So you're going to use those analyses on those parameters. So I think you, you might need to understand the concept. Maybe is it a little, little bit hard to, to understand the concepts or was that too much? Okay, maybe you can show me some emojis if you have understand anything or you can use some emojis around here if you are confused. Let's do that. Confusion? Okay, agreement. I mean, you have understood the concept. Okay. Thank you, Junior. Okay. Like, uh, I take it like everyone had understand the concept. So, yeah, thank you.